7.26. Time now for Art in the Apple, and in this segment we bring the worlds of film, music, theatre, visual arts, spoken word, dance, from the colours, cultures, accents of New York's communities to life and to the airwaves. This morning, Jazz Ain't Dead, with a reinterpretation of Porgy and Bess, featuring Michael Jackson's Billie Jean, I know, jazz, right? And killer choreography, an original R&B pop musical featuring legend uh, Broadway star Marva Hicks, songstress and lyricist Imani Azuri live in Manhattan, and of course, ticket giveaways galore. That's the Thursday tradition. But we start with Porgy and Bess. and George Gershwin, Porgy and Bess, Summertime. Well, Manhattan's Joyce Soho Theatre plays host to Jazz Ain't Dead, celebrating the legacy of Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. It takes the score of Gershwin's hit opera and reimagines the music into young urban jazz inspired by house, funk, acid jazz and soul. And that also includes an extraordinary number, as I mentioned, uh, to Michael Jackson's Billie Jean, slowed all the way down and remixed with some extraordinary choreography. This is just me listening to what it's going to be about. Uh, it features one of New York's uh, favorite spoken word artists, Mo Beasley, and uh, tap dancer Morris Chestnut also features. It kicks off um, tonight and runs until Sunday, March 27th, so it goes through the weekend. The show's choreographer is Candice Franklin, and she joins us now. Candice Franklin, good morning. Welcome to Wake a Call. Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, so we thought we would just that 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 uh, George Gershwin summertime. Oof, one of my favorites. So many beautiful versions of that song, but that was one of my um, favorites. This uh, uh, choosing to reimagine Porgy and um, Bess, um, um, uh, certainly ambitious. Talk about the decision to even do this. Well. Um First of all, um, again, thank you so much for having me on the, uh, the show today. Um, I just want to say that first. But the uh, reason why I even wanted to uh, change that putting in best is because I was looking for, um, I was, I'm always looking as part of Jazz Ain't Dead, uh, songs and, and scores and books of music, like the Book of Ellington or the Book of uh, Ella Fitzgerald or, or whoever to, to redo. Um, cause that's what Jazz Ain't Dead does. We take the classical standards and we redo them into house funk and soul for today's audiences. The classical jazz standards, that is. And Porgy and Bass, the score, um, though it was originally written in an opera, um, of course, over the years, especially in the 50s, um, has been changed into, um, into classical jazz standards. Almost the entire score of Porgy and Bass, of Gershwin's score, has been changed into classical jazz standards. So I thought now in the 21st century we need to progressively move that into um, the urban jazz that we're uh, starting to hear a lot today. Well, that's why I was just looking for another book. <laughs> now, as far as um, what Tolkien and Beth is about, that's another story. <laughs> as far as, uh, you know, it's just controversial in nature. But as far as the music, Gershwin's music is so gorgeous. Mm. And, um, and I, and I thought um, it's, it's probably time to um, 
you know, uh, re reimagine those songs in, for today's uh, young years. And, this and is, there's some really interesting interpretations. One of them, you have a dance um, music that includes summertime as a jazzy burlesque with original spoken word by special guest um, Mo Beasley. Um, you have Ain't Necessary Soul as Acid House. Uh, My Man's Gone Now as a Sexy Acid Jazz Lounge. Um, and I just wonder if you could talk a bit about the process of choosing how you're going to interpret like a classic like Summertime and what it is, the conversation that you're having with the audience when you uh, reimagine it as a, as a burlesque and you add this whole other element to it. Well, I'm, I'm an entertainer in nature, um, a, a dance at theater, and uh, I, it's, it's just that I, the way that I heard it in my head, um, so I knew if I took the swing a little bit stronger with the bass line, um, and I, I told the uh, the saxophonist to play like he's in a brothel um, <laughs> or, you know, some type of place like that, uh, in a smoky lounge, you know, with there's barmaids, you know, and that kind of thing, like a Moulin Rouge type of feel. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you would get our, let's say, if uh, if Josephine Baker happened to be performing that day and she wanted to do Summertime, that interpretation uh, had came into my head of how it would, how it would sound. I haven't heard anyone like that in that interpretation, but I figured um, <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> and plus, I always wanted to do a feather dance at Mimboas. <laughs> mm, mm. I love that. I love the marriage of spoken word and introducing mm -hmm. that. I mean, New York, doesn't this sound fly? And this is at uh, Joyce Soho um, Theatre on Mercer Street. There's six shows from Thursday through to um, Thursday, March 24th, all the way through to March um, um, 27th. Um, talk about the inclusion, though, the, the spoken word artists and how that adds a whole other um, element to this, to, this, to this work, given, as you said, the, contro the controversy of what Puggy and Bess uh, is and was. Mm -hmm. Well, I love having Mo there. He's such a professional. He's he is so hard nosed. He's right on target. Um, adding the spoken word uh, with what we do is just it's just another a layer that um, that that's, that's all about jazz. Um, the way he, he his cadence and everything of how he uses the words is, is definitely uh, the sound we want um, moving jazz and the genre and, and the different elements like the tap and jazz dancing and, 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 and speaking uh, progressively forward into the 21st century, what, what, how we want to hear those sounds, his, his way of, of, of speaking. So that's why I have him on the show. He does set quite a few numbers for us, actually, um, that I built for him, and, uh, and, a, and he has built for me, a vice versa, as far as uh, spoken word-wise. But I, the reason why we have him in Summertime Burlesque, per se, for that specific piece, is that he's talking actually about Bess, who she is, you know, how she's a little wayward woman, you know, she's all uh, every man wants her, you know, and all that kind of thing. So it's a great way to introduce the character of Bess in a new way. And uh, you also, it also features tap dancer Morris uh, Chestnut. Talk a bit about uh, his performance and what he brings to this whole uh, Jazz Ain't Dead conversation. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Maurice Chestnut, he, he's, a, he's an excellent uh former member of the Bringing Noise, Bringing the Funk uh, Broadway uh, show, and he's an improvist. He, he uh, has worked in many uh, jazz clubs, and I see him on the circuit uh, tapping with his board and get out there and put it down and lay, some, lay a number on you. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, a tap dancer is a jazz musician with his mm -hmm. tap, and so is a dancer. So is a jazz dancer. We don't think that way, but I definitely do because, you know, I too play, play music. So, uh, I try to incorporate that, incorporate that into how I create dance. And um, a jazz dancer and a tap dancer should be um, held to the same standard of, of improv as well as uh, uh, any other jazz um, musician would. Um, and improv is a, is a huge element of jazz being dead. Not necessarily much in this particular show. There is improv in the show. There is a, there are an entire, entire number of improv that I do, actually. Um, but um, uh, it's, it, it's important that we do that. We do that in clubs a lot. Uh, we'll work with spoken word artists and the jazz musicians, and we learn to vibe together and create uh, wonderful things, you know, right there on the stage, unscripted, <laughs> everybody in there just jamming. Wow. Um, 
So that's mm-hmm. what we do. And we, and I, I, I make sure it's structured too. I tell them what the storyline with my dance. I tell my dance what the storyline and what we're trying to, to, to accomplish. So the structured improvisation. Now, as far as um, tap dancing is concerned, he's he's basically rocking off the rhythms and things like that. And this is gonna, what we're going to have him do for I Got Playing in Nothing. And I'll tell you a little background about why I chose uh, to to do that, uh, to it, to do it that way. Right. Um, almost every uh, song in our Porgy and Bess uh, tribute uh, is sung with with lyrics, you know, from um, from the score. We just uh, some of the lyrics are kind of like a massage to to work with the tempo because some, uh, you know, George Gershwin's music originally was was, was uh, symphonic and orchestra, a lot of orchestration. But um, so we had to keep something square just so the ears can feel good or whatever, listen to it. But regardless of that, um, we had, uh, oh, I forgot what I was talking about, about Maurice Chestnut uh, dancing. Oh, I know. I got, I got playing nothing. I got playing nothing is one of the few songs that has no words that we chose to do it that way. And the reason why I chose to do it that way is because I feel that a lot of the words in this book, in Porgy and Bess, the abonics in it is a, it's just a, it's quite strong. <laughs> for this that's day a very under, that's a very understated way of saying it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's just it's just it's just a lot to handle. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got a plan, I got no job, I got no mule, all that kind of stuff. It's yeah. just it's, it's just this is very dated. And as far as getting dead is concerned, we try to make uh, everything is progressive with that. We're, we're, we're progressive. So then, the fact of help. Yeah. And before we close, I really want to hear about this um, this this number, this Michael Jackson, Billy Jean number which is totally mm-hmm. slowed down, remixed, changed up, and uh, all kinds of interesting and sensual things done to this number. Just explain this one for us as we close. Oh, yes. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a tribute to Michael Jackson, and I thought that how wonderful it would be to do it with just piano bass and a little brush stroke on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the drum. I thought it would just sound gorgeous that way. Um, if you slow it down, you can really hear the story. Sometimes uh, you can't hear the genius in Michael Jackson when it's going so fast with the pop behind it, mm-hmm. just like jamming along and dancing to it. But when you slow it down, you can see the story. And mm-hmm. we play it out with beautiful Chelsea, R.C., and Jerome, the song Warren, um, are, are dancing to it. And they do an excellent job interpreting the story of Billie Jean and how he doesn't want the baby. I, so. I, it's so interesting. I have events literally from Thursday through till March 27th and I'm literally thinking about my calendar out loud and rearranging because I just need to come see this one time between now and (laughs) Sunday that's how fly it is so we're going to say to Candice Franklin choreographer for Jazz Ain't Dead celebrating the legacy of Gershwin's Porgy and Bess Mm -hmm. at uh, the uh, Joyce Soho Theatre kicks off tonight Thursday March 24th it goes through till Sunday March 27th if you would like more information go to the website www.jazzaintdead written out all as one word dot com that's www.jazzaintdead dot court dot com and of course Neil you know it's Thursday that means it's ticket giveaway tradition time so of course for this we had to get you some tickets. So just hold on to the number because I don't want to see the phone light up. 212-209-2900. 212-209-2900 to win your pair of tickets to see this uh, extraordinary interpretation, the reimagining of what sounds like um, um, a sensual, it's like a love affair with um, jazz, and God knows we need that so often, and reinterpreted, <laughs> reimagined, modernized, but still with um, some beautiful classic elements featuring uh, special guest, spoken word artist, really one of the best, Mo Beasley, tap dancer Morris Chestnut, all kicking off tonight, running through to Sunday, March 27th. Candice Franklin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so every single phone has lit up. New York, we're not answering the phone until 8 o'clock. So I just said, take the number and hold on to it. 212-209-2900. So I know you're listening with your radio up and ringing. Put the phone down because nobody's going to answer the phone. We'll give the tickets away right at the top of the hour. But I want to make sure that everybody has a fair chance. If you have won anything in the last uh, eight weeks, you are not eligible to win this pair of tickets and we keep everybody's names who's won before so um, we'll know 
just to make sure that we, we really broaden it out and make sure that everybody has a chance to enjoy the arts of New York City. Jazz Ain't Dead, celebrating the legacy of Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. And from jazz not being dead to an original R&B musical, Me and Caesar Lee, penned by Pat Holly. Take a listen to one of the show's original pieces of music. <laughs> 